Am zis că am un col de la o. All right, hello everyone. Hope everyone is doing great. Uh, I posted the meeting notes link, so please add yourself as an attendee. And let's give it a couple more minutes until more people join and we can get started. All right, I think we can get started. You can see some more folks adding um, more items to the agenda, but I think we can get started with the uh, white paper uh, GitHub PR. So um, maybe uh, folks already know, but the, the white paper is already available on GitHub for anyone to make changes. We do have a PDF that was published around KubeCon, but with this... Um, uh, availability within GitHub, we can actually make changes and anybody can just create another PR if they want to add anything new or they want to make any changes or want to create a V2 of the white paper. Uh, any comments on this? I think that the this version, I just to add, this version is also available in the tag runtime. Uh, uh, site so the markdown is also available in addition to the PDF in the in the website for tag runtime, which is also very nice if people like reading from the web page versus uh, a PDF. <laughs> yeah, I can share the screen. Uh, so basically, yeah, what we're talking about here is the. The Cloud Native AI Working Group and the white paper is available here. Yep. Yep. Uh, but it, it can you can also edit it, the paper under here. If you go to Tag Runtime, there's working groups 
there's cloud native AI and there's white papers here. So there's a HTML file or a markdown file. And, and yeah, so if you want to edit this, you can just, you know, do it through GitHub or uh, do it on your local computer and make the changes here. And this is just one example. And then you can create a PR and add anything else. So. And to add just, um, so that I fixed the figure in there. So the figure in this paper is actually the fixed figure. Um, so you, you're not going to see the, the, the other one in the white paper, we also need to fix, but this one is the right one. And then, yeah. Uh, so here, the, this one ha doesn't have the layer. Some people might view this as a feature, not a bug in the paper where we, you know, for some reason, the figure ended up in the white paper was the entire life cycle in addition to the data prep training serving and scale in the machine learning life cycle. So uh, yeah, this one is the clean one. So that's, yeah, for better or worse, I think it's, it's yeah. Sounds good. Any questions about this? Any any other questions before we move on to the next topic? Just uh, just wondering. Um, I mean, does it make sense to add uh, like uh, you know something that we were discussing? Uh, how how Kubernetes is enabling um, such uh, workloads to the to the white paper? Yeah, right. Or or do you want just um, uh, do you want this only like uh, modifications, not like new sections? Well, you can you can add new sections if you think. I mean, it's not there already. I think we already mentioned Kubernetes quite a bit in the white paper. But yeah. if if there's anything else that you think it's missing, I mean, it can be added. So, right. So. Yeah, like uh, specific things, like you know, like um, you know, having sort of uh, pre-baked images or having the operator instead of having to manually install the drivers um, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, scheduling using things like Carpenter. So, so along those lines, maybe, maybe I'll share a rough draft. And if that makes sense, then maybe we can consider it. So uh, Ricardo, maybe I'll ask the question in a more generic way. Uh, yeah. No, it, how far do we want to pull this aversion? and and modify it so this one have covered a subset of whatever we want to cover in the future do we want to seal this and then create new additions or new versions of the of, of you know this is edition one and then second edition which focuses on other topics like scheduling for example or do we want to expand and keep expanding this white paper to cover more topics and go in more details i think that's I would say I'd ask the more generic question. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I think uh, we probably want to uh, just keep this as a V1 and then any any changes maybe in the V2, but we also don't want to make it super extensive because we want it uh, to have a limited amount of text for uh, readers to make it digestible. So if there's like one specific area where you, members of the community want to uh, get involved with and want to explore and develop, we can create another document that addresses that specific area, a more specific area, like scheduling, for example. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I was just going to add, we could create like a roadmap of follow on papers. Um, uh, just just to see what's going. And also for what it's worth, having done a white paper in a different working group, it was much easier to do updates and make edits in Google Docs than it was in Markdown in GitHub. Uh, but that's just for consideration. But I think to that point, like Adele had put in a Slack, like a thoughts on what are other papers we could put that into something mean what is easily maintainable to have that roadmap for follow-on documents. Yeah. 
Yeah, and then we did actually write the white paper or started using Google Docs and, and then we decided to put it in GitHub because it was sort of finalized. So if anyone wants to make like some minor changes, I guess we they can do it here. Uh, but yeah, collaboration wise, Google Docs seems to be better. But at some point we need to put it in GitHub as a way of doing version control. Uh, and so that that's the standard CNCF methodology and, and how they follow that with all the, the CNCF repositories and, and GitHub. Yeah, which is to me aligns also with what we just discussed, like for minor edits, I think these can be done in GitHub because like someone can notice a, a, a spelling mistake, someone can notice a, a bad figure, or something like that can be can be patched through GitHub, but for like extreme collaboration and, and, and fast uh, brainstorming, I think what we did with the docs was great because everyone could comment and then we could iterate very fast versus like having to review PRs and so on which puts the load on, on on only a few people versus like everyone is reviewing and doing this iteratively very fast. Um, yeah, so. So Vijay, do you wanna uh, propose something? So feel free to propose and then we can take it from there, right? So maybe yeah. we can add that as well. Perfect, and uh, yeah, and also open to any other thoughts like, uh, you know, Adele and you were talking about uh, scheduling, so. Yeah. So it's scheduling of AI workloads. Yeah, I, I was talking about like AI workloads in Kubernetes. Um, how? You know, because uh, they can be deployed in virtual machines also, uh, you know, where does Kubernetes come in to play? You know, okay. uh, you know, for example, because um, I was sort of lucky to be part of a book club, which, uh, you know, um, uh, which Adele was uh, leading. <laughs> it was awesome, Adele. Uh, and uh, one of the questions was, uh, how is Kubernetes helping? Uh, you know, so, so yeah, we can do this in the VM. We can do in, uh, you know, uh, groups of uh, VMs, like scale sets. But uh, where would, uh, is there something that Kubernetes does different? You know, that uh, is there, uh, is, is Kubernetes enabling it in some way, you know, that they can consider Kubernetes as an option. So yeah, yeah. so just more on those lines. Yeah, I think we, we do actually talk about that in the white paper quite a bit, but, uh, mm -hmm. but if you want to like expand that, then we can certainly do something that. Uh... Okay. okay, uh, I think we can move on to the next topic. Uh, if nobody so has there's any... a hand. There's a hand up, uh, Ricardo. I don't know if you want oh, to take sorry. Oh, my, my yeah. 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 Hi. Uh, I, I just, I, I just got on the call, but I'm yeah. glad I got in when I did because I think Vijay's topic is of specific interest to me because I come from Kubernetes like project. Um, I, I'm sure you saw Dims's message already, but if you haven't, there is a working group forming in Kubernetes called WG Serving which is specifically aligned to figuring out the changes that need to be done in Kubernetes to better support scheduling of AI workloads. Um, and not just figuring that out, but also making those changes. So it's, I, I'm not, it, it isn't an official working group yet. There is still conversations going on, but it's quite cross cutting in the Kubernetes project. So please do get, or at least keep an eye out over there. Uh, WG serving is one of the two working groups that are coming out, but it looks like that's sort of the more relevant one to this discussion. So I just wanted to put that out there and thank you Vijay for bringing it up. Thanks Mahal. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. All right. So any other comments about this? Yeah, I have another uh, item in the agenda to actually discuss. Okay, I think it's, it's going to become important later. Like, you know, we have scheduling, we have serving, we have a lot of uh, you know, accelerated management. There's a lot of working group working on Cube. How can we reconcile that? But I'll, it, it's late in the agenda, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll yeah. discuss that. Yeah, so we'll discuss that in a bit. So, so any KubeCon follow-ups? Um, any any. I mean, we already talked about VJ's idea, but any other ideas 
in terms of like this working group uh, or tackling in, in 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 this working group and going forward. I, I know we have a a few things already, but uh, we'd like to leave it open and uh, for folks to who want to explore different areas that are relevant to their interests. Uh, and, and some of this might actually uh, spin up into maybe more, more I would say, uh, constrained groups where, where they actually, you know, tackle like that, that that really specific area. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think everybody is going to be interested in every, every single thing and everybody's going to be busy doing many things because this, the scope of, of AI is so large, I think. So, but, but we're open to, to hear uh, ideas or things that uh, members in the community want to address. Just we'll do a, get a point. Um, so I have this uh, proposal to have the show and tell uh, in cloud native AI space. Uh, this is may, may not be limited to just our working group, but it's uh, to a broader community that uh, has a uh, presentations, blogs, or just conference talks that have uh, AI coverage. Uh, so one of the potential projects we can start up with is that uh, we create a summary uh, with large language models to catch all these uh, talks in a single place. So everybody can take a look, check the summary, and if that's some, something we can pick up in the discussion, that is can create the, the save a lot of time for everybody. So we do not have to watch each of the talks or blogs individually. Uh, so that's also be a very nice use case, how we can use AI in cloud native space to help the community to accelerate the knowledge adoption. Do you propose having this on the website or on the or on the GitHub repository? We already have a, a yeah a GitHub repository. So we have the uh, the working group um, repository and the CNCF GitHub. So potentially one of the directories can be dedicated to the show and tell. Uh, so what is going on in cloud native space in terms of AI advances? Uh, one of the you know we can write a robot or something to pass the YouTube scripts or just get any of the CNCF blogs and put a summary over there. This could keep us up to date. And also uh, not to miss any of the things that we have to do manually. Sounds good. So, I mean, do you want to get that started then? Yeah. Do you have any volunteers? I volunteer on this as well. I'm Chen from IBM Research. Thank you. So is this is this uh, so to understand? Uh, is this like summarizing state of the art, or yes. is this summarize okay. the state of arts and also go into the QCOM talks or any of the Linux Foundation talks uh, that's posted on YouTube, and then we can just um, get a summary, use a lunch or whatever tools that we have available to develop a, a little bit of code to write the summary for us. Yeah, I'll sign myself up. With, yeah. It's a okay. good issue. Yeah. Okay, great. I have a question if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure if this is appropriate. Okay, so feel free to redirect me, Ricardo Adel. So, uh, you know, when we say propose, uh, you mean in this, I propose in the Slack channel? Or I just, I just want to be sure, uh, you know, if that's what uh, you are intending. I, I, it means I'll, I post something in this Slack channel, or, or are we talking about, uh, you know, some other mechanism in which uh, I, I proceed? Uh, sorry, can you repeat that again? <laughs> yeah, just just wondering. Um, you know, I'll I'll sync up with uh, Madhav too, but um, but I'm just wondering. Uh, you know, when I have a, a rough draft, do I post that in the Slack channel? Is that is that the way I go about it, or? Uh that's one way yeah to I, to communicating but yeah that we usually use the slack channel as a general communication mechanism right so yeah so that works okay okay yeah something like uh something like uh oh, okay i created the draft for this you know and uh, uh basically i love to get some feedback and you know would like to collaborate then with members that are interested um so 
I, I sense that this is going to be like becoming super uh, extensive in, in terms of people like uh, wanting to do many different things. So it might be, uh, we might actually have to set up separate meetings uh, where none of us, or, or, or I wouldn't say none of us, but like only some, some of us, us. Yeah. Or some of us will want to attend to that specific meeting, right? So Makes sense. Yeah. So I'm trying to I'm trying to read through some of the Slack notes, but uh, it would be great if uh, folks actually can voice because uh, there's a lot of a lot of conversations on Slack too. So let's see. So what other white papers are we considering in the future? Uh, sorry if it's already. So I think uh, VJ is looking at that uh, in terms of scheduling, uh, but uh, I mean it's open in terms of like the community figuring now or or deciding what, what they want to write about right? and, and what's more interesting to them. Could someone share the meeting notes, please? So someone already did. Uh, uh, Kubernetes serving group. K-Native folks would love to join that. Okay, the serving group, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Mario says this is part of the last week uh, in Kubernetes newsletter. Yeah, I, I can also basically tell it. So um, regarding the automated sc scrapping of data and basically sending it out to uh, aggregate stuff, uh, please be aware that you need to manually go over the data because usually everything that you scrape automatically is in a not you can send it out, uh, you can send it right away state. Um, so this involves some work. So if you do this, be prepared that um, it's a manual, there's still a manual task that you need to take care to make it worthwhile for the people. Hi, Mr. so I, I see two hands up for quite a while. <laughs> Uh, Victor and Frederick. I don't know who was first. Like, is it so. Uh... Go, Frederick. Go, go ahead, Frederick. Okay, cool. Thanks. So, I think um, if if you're looking for additional topics that could possibly help, and depending on who you're scoping some of this work towards, um, a very common thread that I see in application uh, teams, especially in uh, larger enterprises, is that they often use Kubernetes as a way to get an easier path to conformance because everything is already set up and installed. They have all of the appropriate security control set up. And I think it could also be a path towards accelerating uh, AI workloads where uh, there's, of course, there, there's things that are unique to AI compared to how many of the applications work. But it's it may be a topic that you may want to consider as a path towards like how can uh, how can studies uh, help like, accelerate the path to not just security, but to clients, especially in highly regulated areas. Uh, that's that's the hope. And and for the uh, scope, I added um, under the landscape. I added a what edge computing. Uh, so so far, the AI is grouped into one category. I know there are just a lot of topics. I'm not sure could we separate uh, AI on the edge because I think the, a lot of will be different. A lot of consideration will be different when it comes on the edge. Uh, that's one comment. I'm not sure that's up should be in scope or not. Uh, second is about uh, Kubernetes itself. Um, I, I actually, I looked up uh, OpenAI before. I know OpenAI, most likely, I think they trained on Spark before, but um, looks like they are doing a lot of Kubernetes. So I'm pretty sure at least OpenAI is, is already using uh, Kubernetes. And so uh, actually, Ricardo, I, I pinged you with some, uh, I'm, I'm not a developer, I'm a database consultant actually, interested in programming, but never been uh, too much into it. Uh, I just wonder, is it is it uh, an interest to create a, a developer tool uh, by basically reading the GitHub, the open source uh, cloud native uh, code base so that it could kind of, I don't know, it's going to be a full IDE. At least it could potentially help uh, 
uh, developing future cloud native applications. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so cool. I think yeah, I think uh, Fred Frederick has some comments about that, and so in terms of like ChatGPT being served on um, Kubernetes, Kubernetes, I think it is served on Kubernetes from what I've heard, right? So. Yes. On Azure as well. <laughs> That's more, more uh, at least what, what, what I can infer from their, uh, from their blog post a while ago, which we also linked in the, in the white paper. Yeah, the, the reason I think about it is uh, because the current tool, whether it's Copilot or there's a Devon tool for AI developers, they are very generic tools that have to read everything and try to uh, really cater to every development use case. But if there's a tool that can read the, the cloud native code base only, and only kind of a, you can say, good practices that fed into that tool, it can pot potentially be a much better helper to cloud native yeah. developers. So along that line, sorry, I probably just too early, I should raise my hand, but uh, along that line, so I had a proposal to create this uh, cloud native Actually, CNCF projects, the PR review bots, basically the idea is that so whenever people create AI, uh, PR, and um, oftentimes the maintainers may not have the time to read it in a timely basis. At this time, uh, we can use that review bot to review the PRs just, um, just to accelerate the overall community engagement. So that's where help for a lot of uh, the projects help, a lot of projects, and potentially can also be useful to Help the community to create certain templates to create a uh, you know use cases use large language models. Okay. Right. Makes sense. Any other comments? Um, so I, I, this is probably more of a logistical question, but I wanted to know if working groups within the tag talk to each other because I mean, full disclosure, I'm, I'm not someone who's very privy to this space. So I'm just coming here after bugging a bunch of people at KubeCon to teach me about this field. Uh, and one thing that came up quite a lot was using wasm for inference uh, because of the all of the spin cube hype, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so that's what a lot of people told me that they were interested in looking at. So is WG wasm and WG AI talking to each other at all to sort of club these two together? Or is that something that's been considered in the past? I was just curious about that. I, I don't really have well, an it idea. Well, it happened. I would say it hasn't quite happened yet, but uh, okay, we'd love to have some collaboration with that, right? So yeah, there were a lot of conversations about serving inference uh, using Wasm. So that that's something that we can push forward, I think. Okay, yeah. And, 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 I, I just wasn't sure what the structure looked like, so thanks. Yeah, and, 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 and we haven't really talked officially, but I mean, if that's an area that is interesting to you, yeah, go ahead and do it, right? Okay, any other things before we move on to landscape? So yeah. I'll, I put this in the notes, but I'll still call it out and I'm sorry for hogging the meeting a little bit, no, but no worries. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I just wanted to circle back a little bit to the WG serving part. Um, one of the goals of the working group is to talk more to other CNCF ecosystem projects. So, and this is something that I noticed at AI hub as well. So I did an unconference session exactly on what do we need better out of Kubernetes as a scheduler. For, to support these type of workloads better. And that's where I met Vijay as well. And some of the conversations that came up were, okay, I want to use Volcano, but I also sort of want to use Q. They don't work well together. I want to use Qbray. 
and that as a scheduler on top of kubernetes as a scheduler isn't nice so i think if we like I, i'll also put this up at the on the email thread so that both of these groups are aware but i think this is a very very good opportunity for the cncf ecosystem to actually talk to kubernetes because i feel like a lot of the development has happened around it but now there is a good chance to influence the de development in kubernetes itself so i i know we have a lot of maintainers here so please please keep an eye out over there as well yeah and i think uh, another area that we want to explore is the reference architecture and then when you talk about you know people using different schedulers and how they fit together i think it would be helpful to have that kind of reference architecture uh, because people might be confused uh, about how they can run all these different things together but yeah that it, it's a lot of work actually so i mean i'm just kind of mentioning it, but you know get into that stage will will take time yeah and i, I one thing to add just uh, you know it is obvious more or less that we want to solve for ai at the kubernetes layer so there's a lot of you know working groups forming there's a lot of efforts uh, ongoing but i think but at least one thing i'm hoping we we all get out of this working group is if we start with the use cases in the industries what are each use case trying to get to and then get to the technologies that enable that, whether that is, you know, better scheduling, better serving and so on. So this, you know, start with the use case and then get to the technology that enables it to guide that collaboration between the working groups. I hope that will come up organically. Um, and, but yeah, I mean, this is one of my, at least my personal aspirations from joining this group and, and, and collaborating with you all. Okay, makes sense. Uh, okay, I think we can go ahead and talk about the landscape. There, there are two hands up. Um, so, so uh, Andre and yeah, yeah, I saw, Andre, I saw Andre, 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 Andre. Andre. <laughs> Sorry, I, saw, I also have a hand, hand up from Hamid Wright. Do you want to speak up? Yeah, no, go ahead, Andre. Yeah, hi folks. Yeah, so I'm just to anyone like us. I'm from Kubeflow community, also participating in this working group AI paper, working with the folks for the last four months. So in terms of this working group serving discussion, so just to give you the context. So we've been running the working group serving for the last four years in the Kubeflow community, and this is how the KSR project was built back in like 2019. So uh, my only like point is similar to like what they, they also like yes we need to be focusing on the use cases and also you know we don't need to build a new solutions because uh, serving is like very complex problem to solve and people like working on the case serve for many years to address several problems in terms of like you know uh, multi-model serving batch batch inference or uh, model monitoring and other aspects so my only like concern and maybe suggestion to work with the case serve community because they also like we, they will join CNCF very soon and just to see how we can collaborate together to build better services uh, native to Kubernetes, right? Because I agree that probably some of the Kubernetes native workload is not probably ready for different use cases of model storing, but rather than building a new tool, we probably need to collaborate with these folks to see how we can build a better infrastructure for online inference, right? Um, yeah, and I know right now that's also like another work, you know, which is like accelerator management and um, also serving, right? And would love to understand like how uh, folks there envision the collaboration between multiple um, members within the community. So, um, yeah, that's why we yeah. have everybody here. So, <laughs> so I think everybody needs to pitch in to, to collaborate. Right? Yeah. Uh so I have a point that I uh, totally uh, this actually just a second the Adele and uh, Andrea just saying uh, we have a white paper that's uh, outlined the uh, five areas of um, uh, cloud native AI. So if you can just spend um, a little bit more in depth and then uh, show uh, what's the community, what we have, uh, you know, uh, what's the happens in the community and how the community can using this uh, existing CNCF ecosystem, that will be a huge improvement. Because at the point, I believe these are, uh, as we are getting more and more technologies moving forward, it becomes an issue of getting overly complicated uh, as we move on. So 
I think the working group will help a lot if we can just um, do a good job on education and creating the stories for the community uh, rather than just um, focusing on you know, creating new stories, cr creating new technologies, or just uh, advanced discussions. That will not take a time to happen. That's probably more productive. Okay, sounds good. Uh, stories for users, for end users. Yes. Rather so if than... you can just, uh, right. So if you can just uh, create a deep dive into the areas that's in a white paper. Um, that's yeah, be and, and then we also have to see how we collaborate with other groups because we, I mean, we look at the serving model serving. So I think you're talking about the MLOps lifecycle and, and going deeper into each one of these areas, uh, but you know, collaborating also with like the existing working groups or, or new working groups like the serving working group. Uh, but there's some other areas like like uh, model training, uh, data mm -hmm. prep, and storing your artifacts, and Observability also is another area in in the in the MLOps lifecycle. Okay, anybody else has a hand raise? Sounds good. Okay, we can talk about the landscape. Uh, Ronald, are you around? Uh, I am. Hi everyone. Hey. Uh, sorry, I was late. I, uh, for whatever reason, Google will not let me log into Zoom um, with a particular my work account, so I had to use my personal account. So anyway, uh, uh, so the landscape where it is is <laughs> where it was. Um, so we 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 took a, a an attempt um, to create it. Uh, it's a lot of busy work. Um, I mean, it's good everyone's you know contributed to it. But uh, structurally speaking, because of its YAML nature, it's just a lot of work to get it all formatted. So the last thing we did was get it um, the kind of work with the landscape uh, tool, which actually generates the visual landscape. Um, Chris had uh, recommended that we create like a subcategory, like uh, like Wasm did. So if you're familiar with the current landscape, um, you could... Um, uh, can you actually show that, uh, Ricardo? Probably be educational. Just go to the regular landscape. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Right? And so uh, this is everything, right? So you see there's a box there for WASM and serverless and up there. Uh, yeah. So he suggested making one for, for CNAI. Mm -hmm. and, and then we put our stuff to, you know, it would render here, right? Uh, so it would be in the bigger one, of course, but then as a subcategory, it would it would show up here. So that's what we did. Um, we're missing lots of information, lots of like logos, things like that. Turns out a lot of people do uh, SVGs and this thing doesn't use SVGs, right? So that that's, um, you know, those are the kinds of problems we're running into. So there's, uh, where where is it now? So um because I am, I've never been involved with the landscape project. I wasn't sure the procedure, so uh, I didn't fork or you know do anything like that. So I made a ticket and zipped up everything that was the latest and put it there. So the YAML and all that. Um, there's two config files. There's one that does all the um, things here that get rendered, and then there's that creation of the button on the outer piece. And so I was looking for advice um, from the people who do this. Um, and I've never heard back from anyone, and I, I assume um, it's just uh, on the back burner. So, anyway, yeah. that's that's where it is. We're we're waiting to get some advice to see if this is the right way to do it. Um, and if it is, um, proceed. Uh, if it's wrong, they could tell us what we need to fix. So, um, again, we're just waiting for for feedback. Do you have a pull request? Do you create a pull request? No, I made a ticket. That that was. Because because no one could tell me if it was going to mess up the system if we broke it, <laughs> right? So with a pull request, so that's why we did a ticket. So it's a, uh, is it AI? I, I, I can see it. I can see it. Yes, yeah. sub landscape. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it looks like we need to follow up. Uh, yeah. So so I think KubeCon is probably the main reason this this got delayed. So 
So what we were asking for people is, is if you want to add new sections, just put them in here as comments versus in Slack or in the doc, um, just so we're all in one, one place. And then um, the next piece is it's a lot of work. So we thought, okay, was there a subset of work we could do? Could we take the, the very few things that we actually can get all the information for and just start with that versus trying to do, you know, hundreds of things as much as what we had. Right. So, um, I think that's probably the prudent thing, but even that still is going to need some feedback from someone who, who manages the landscape. Do, do yeah. we know anyone besides Chris who flies around and drops nuggets of knowledge? Is there any, anyone else who <laughs> works on this? Uh, we we can actually reach out on on the landscapers uh, Slack channel on the CNCF Slack. Oh, they have a Slack. Yeah, of course they. they <laughs> of course, they have another channel. <laughs> uh, does anybody on the call want want to actually help out in this area? So also, or just throwing it out there, so looking with the landscaper interested. So I uh, initially I, had the attempt to create the ammo so I could help. Uh, Ronald was, you know, we have another repo where we keep our stuff. I had another, I had a version of that, but I think this is more of an evolution of that. So I could help as well here. Yeah, that, uh, Del, I, I took yours because you, you, we, we had a start, then you further that, then I took yours, and then I made this and fixed some things. And yeah, this is. Yeah, so I can, I can great. help whenever needed. Uh, Ronald, just ping me and. If you need extra hands and I'm here. <laughs> yeah. So how, how about this? Just so we're not guessing. I, now that I know there's, of course, a, a channel, I'll go over there and ask, see what we need to do. And um, the main thing I'm going to ask is, can we put it in a branch or a PR or whatever? Right. So we could all work on it properly. Um, and then if that's true, I'll, I'll move it there. And if it's not true, I'll report back on what we're supposed to do. That's good. Okay. I think I heard somebody else on the call say something, but maybe I, I didn't. So I don't know. Okay. So, all right. So we have a radar uh, that we're thinking about doing. Uh, so I think, Ronald, you also had this uh, in mind, yeah. right? Or creating yeah. It. So the radar, um, just as a general thing, why I think it's a good thing. Um, the landscape is just, you know, it's an amalgamation, right? Of lots of things. It's it's cool in its own right, but it is it is rough to make any judgments about things with it. Um, and a radar to me uh, indicates, you know, different things like maturity or whatever. And I, I think it's a, a little more tactical and a little, you know, there could be many radars. And so if you've never seen a, a radar, uh, you know, it'd be nice to probably put it, examples here. Um, there's uh i think they're just good and to to the point like short one page type things um and to to the statement earlier you know maybe we should be talking to people questioning them what they're doing right get get more input from the community that kind of input would feed into like a radar very well right like what is everyone using are you really using it in prod are you just using it in dev like you know all those kinds of things so i think what needs to happen for something like this is some kind of a, a matrix listing of, of, of radars, right? Because there's more than one kind of radar, right? So I think if uh, maybe for those who are interested, uh, we come up with some examples of things that might be of, of use and kind of iterate over those. Um, and then, you know, of course we can compare to what's what's out there, make sure we're doing something new and useful. And I think, um, yeah, I think that's kind of kind of where it is. And if anyone else has thoughts on that, that would be cool too. Awesome. Anybody on the call who wants to? So I, not the radar, but I, um, yeah, I, again, like still far in the agenda, but what I was thinking, Ronald, like how can we make that radar uh, more dynamic and targeted, right? And so I've, I've tried to talk to some folks in, about, about, about the radar and KubeCon seems like it hasn't been updated in a while. And can we take a different spin on the radar or do we think that this radar with this format is, is, is productive enough? And when I say a different spin, I'll probably talk about it more later with that CNI LLM thing that, that kind of gives you, because the, the point of the radar is to give you, uh, so first maturity levels and then a stack of tools that you could use based on the maturity. Right. Yep. And, 
can, can we get this job done with, you know, more dynamically versus like a static page that would have to update every time we want to add something to or change something? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the landscape, right? So it's over, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that that's a good idea. Um, yeah. Anybody has any thoughts on, 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 on the radar? Or I, I was just wondering, uh, is, is radar like a roadmap? And if not, like, how, how is it different? It, it is a bit of a roadmap, but I would argue it's, it's mm -hmm. you know, it's a little more purpose built. Like here you can see like it's secret tools or techniques, right? Versus like maybe the business purpose, right? Where a roadmap would tend to to be the tech and the, the business features that kind of go along with it. You know, like we, we want this feature, right? So we need this tech to do it. So mm -hmm. the, the, these are more of a summary maybe of particular areas of, of uh, utility, maybe is, is the way to think of it. Yeah, and I think this this is constantly changing too. So that's the the issue with. I mean, these are pretty old. Let's see, already it still might be true yeah. though. <laughs> 20, 2020, 2021. Right? So. Yeah. Well, this goes to Dell's comment. You know, probably slightly got to do with automation get people interested in using it right i mean there's it's like anything right it takes work to keep it alive yeah okay so i added both of our names here so anybody anybody else wants to pitch in here or... just just wondering what is what's what's the help required for you know i think we just need to start gathering information on, or understanding how we can we can um uh, get get it published. I mean, with, there's just two ideas. So, so make it more dynamic, right? So and or make it how it is right now. I'm, I'm leaning more towards making it more dynamic. So one thing is we can actually uh, engage the CNCF staff and see if we can actually get something started, like a project, uh, to 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 make it more dynamic, right? Like in in, in how to get it published, kind of like. How we did it with the white paper so again it's a lot of work right? and, and it'll take a lot of time right so yeah and uh, ronald if, if i can ask you another question you know you mentioned something interesting utility areas would they be would that be the same as use case scenarios or uh, just trying to understand yeah i think use cases again is still more focused on the person versus the tool um you know like like in that case we saw like things like secrets mm -hmm. right like that could be used for lots of things, right? Like, so um, I, I, again, I think it's a little more on the t the general tools ability as a way of boiling that ocean. Like, hey, here's the secret management tools, right? And they're kind of arranged in this way. I mean, we have this kind of uh, stuff now, right? In the landscape, you have, you know, from sandbox, you know, incubation, the sandbox to, you know, right. mature and or graduated, right? So it's, you know, it's kind of like restructuring that, um, to view it, right? Because a lot of the information, of course, will be duplicative in various places like the landscape. It's just another visual of some of that information. I think it is, this can also be another version, another white paper. Like, so the job that the radar does is like, if you mm -hmm. look at it, it tells you the maturity of the tools in the landscape targeted towards uh, uh a job like you know DevSecOps, and then the maturity of each of the stacks, and then that is more a recommendation from the cloud native community to say, you know, we've looked into this; it looks quite mature now, and we have a maturity stages also in the CNCF. So if if it's backed up for a CNCF project, we could complement that. So it feels like it could also be another version of a white paper going out and saying. Here's the here are the tools here are the maturity with the visualization involved in addition to it being more dynamic right um, so radar yeah, on its yeah, own. Well, just, yeah just one thing to add there you're right like the people who I see where radars are good is like if you're in a like a business more setting you know with management and that, and that includes engineering as well right it's it's like a nice one page thing to show to discuss stuff right. Uh, and even if you're like a CEO and you don't know what secrets management really, you know, you don't know PKI, you don't know TLS, you don't know any of that, right? Um, potentially, right? So it's still just a good visualization. So like, yeah, there, there is work in these tools. 
they'll ask things like, well, why is this one mature? Why is that one not mature? You know, it could be just time and effort. It could be money. It could be whatever, right? Uh, just general acceptance. And so it just makes those conversations um, easier. I, I, in right. my mind, I think this is a better tool for more like management and above versus maybe a line engineer. But even there, it's a, it's a nice way to be like, hey, we picked them. You know, we only use mature things, right? So um, that kind of thing. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm interested in helping regardless. Okay. All right. So let me add your name here. So there were a couple of questions. Uh, I think. I think uh, Ronald, you already answered that one. So I think Juan Min, you had a. Uh, uh, whether there's adoption on this, I, I mean, I don't, I, we have to uh, reach out to the CNCF and find out like how that's being yeah. used. Yeah. If that's like anything like a Google Analytics on this uh, radar page, that'd be great. So we can see what's the adoption rate. So I guess um, the popularities of the radar page. Yeah. Okay, so that's Radar. Um, we got 10 more minutes. Uh, so let's see what we can uh, go through in the next 10 minutes. So uh, we have this document, which is the cloud native. We can discuss it. I think we got uh, quite a few items already here. Uh, sorry? Yes. Yeah, we have already discussed a few things here already. Um, okay, we, we have. So, yeah. okay. Okay, so now we have, uh, uh, Adele, you added this document, how cloud native AI is different. Uh, from all the other working groups. And I think there were a lot of comments earlier. Uh, so we can discuss this and how we can maybe create some sort of like uh, on the web page or some, or some document. Yeah, so we, we, we have a chart, right? There's a chart that uh, Ricardo that, that exists today. And I think it, just adding a section, you know, because people sometimes might get confused. They see artificial intelligence, they see patch, they see serving, they see accelerator management, they see patch again in CNCF. So how does this working group, uh, you know, distinguish itself or how is it different from other working groups that solves concrete problems? Uh, I think adding something there in, you know, in the charter to say, how are we different from all the other working groups that work on the same space would, would help deconfuse some folks. This, you know, uh, I see it might help. Uh, you confuse some folks. I don't know if folks agree if that is the case. Yeah, uh, I agree. I mean, we can we can add something here once those working groups actually get established. Because right now they're just in the beginning uh, stages. So once they get get established, we can make uh, we can decide how how they're different from this, or we can add documentation around that. Um, and, 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 and I think the speech is dynamic too. Is that it, it, I mean, it, it, it doesn't yeah. mean like a lot of this stuff is is static. Sorry. Uh, yeah, just a quick question. Like, um, so I like I, I just checked the message you sent yesterday about this, like about the differences. So uh, I just have a question about like the um, our charter and vision in terms of the cloud native AI, right? So are we targeting not the Kubernetes as the our main underlying infrastructure moving forward? Like my question is like in the future, in the like multi-year effort, are we planning to also like provide the guidelines for people who maybe want to use Slurm or any other, you know, uh, different resource schedulers uh, to run their AI workloads? Um, uh, yeah, I, I have a I have a personal view on this, and this is okay. Part of the missions of these working groups is to extract the common standards of Slurm, of Runai, of all these different tools and ways of doing the same job into a standard that is working on Kubernetes. So basically the same mission of us abstracting away the, the differences and creating a common language, they are doing this in their own respective working group boundaries. And so if if it, it, I view this as more, we delegate this job at each layer for the layer that knows how to do it best, for example, for serving, I, I view like serving have a mission uh, or might have a mission to extract the common standards and produce something like we did with CSI or with CRI or with, you know, with DRA and so on, extracting the common patterns into something that is not specific to a, a vendor or a way of doing scheduling or, or, or workload management, right? That's how I, I, I view it. And, and then I view CNA AI pointing to these working groups 
or the shared standards and extracting them away and maybe referencing them. Mm -hmm. But still, like, I mean, right now we're taking the Kubernetes underlying infrastructure for all cloud native workloads, right? If it's That's speaking... the assumption we're making for now. Uh, yes. So that that is that is the assumption we're making for now. And there's also extensions to that. But we had, I think, I remember this discussion uh, two weeks ago, or like a couple of weeks before KubeCon. And I think we, you know, I also started a Slack thread uh, uh, on the VG Slack and. I think at the end of the day, we kind of agreed softly that cube or case should be the that the first uh, go to, and then we should not limit ourselves to just case, but also be aware of what's out there if it's not um, if it's not covered by Kubernetes or the cloud native community. I don't know if we reached complete consensus on that. It's just yeah, what I got. Yeah, no, we have, and I think uh, this also goes back to what is cloud native too, and then they're actually uh, reworking that definition of cloud native. So I think we once that actually becomes clear, then we can also uh, say whether other orchestrators are, you know, part of the the standards. Uh, I mean, a lot of this stuff has actually been driven by Kubernetes, like uh, CNI and CSI, right? But uh, uh, I mean, the community is also aware that there are other solutions out there, like Slurn. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I, in my opinion, we we should we should we should bring awareness that those solutions are there too. But we can we can all we can all only focus on on what on something right and or or given the amount of time or or resources that we have. Yeah, I think yeah, I agree. Um, I sorry, I drive late. I think you know for the other working group, which is under Kubernetes, right? Um, but Kubernetes is just one project in the CNCF, and there are other projects too. And also Kubernetes uh, mainly deal with scheduling or scaling, and uh, they are like you know the runtime layer, which is at the lower layer, uh, work there to do to support the AI um, workflow or the AI workload. And also they are like telemetry observability part. So that's also another, uh, uh, I mean, um, another part. So I think we should position ourselves as the CNCF level, which, you know, um, covers not just the Kubernetes project part, but there are other pieces too. Um, but I've, I agree we should refer to the work that's uh, being done by the uh, working groups inside the Kubernetes project. Yeah, I'm just just a quick question. Like, I'm wondering, do we have any project in CNCF which is not built on top of Kubernetes today? Sorry, did, could you say it again? Like, do we do we have any uh, um, project in CNCF which is built not on top of Kubernetes? Like any sub project, any components? Wasm, right? Okay. Wasm, yeah. Um, there's a bunch. There's, yeah. Yeah, there's a bunch. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot that that are not built on top of Kubernetes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the CNCF started with Kubernetes and that's one of the things that, you know, uh, may make people think that everything is about Kubernetes. I mean, but but uh, as, as shown yeah. like this, so in a different form, that filtering things that are cloud native in the WASM landscape, they're really little. And of those, there are things like Spring Cube and so on. So like a, a super set of those kind of like falls in Cube, but that point still, remains that not everything, the superset is inclusive of everything also that is not Kubernetes, but the majority, the 90% is Kubernetes. Yeah, you, you go to the CSF, you know, project, like their gRPC project, they are like, you know, the ECO project, they are cloud events project. Yeah, so there are many projects um, like Prometheus telemetry project. They are, they could integrate with Kubernetes, but they are not part of the uh, Kubernetes. So yeah. they're not yeah inside I the think, Kubernetes. I think open telemetry is a very good example. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so then yeah, it, it goes into this Kim making uh, uh yep, yep. yeah, so the of the cloud native principles that uh, we provide like guidance on cloud native. But not making some solution like the de facto solution. So that's why I said it's important that 
we make the community aware of other solutions like Slurn or, or other orchestrators that are not necessarily built on top of Kubernetes. Yeah, I think it's good to add in the uh, charter to clarify this, uh, you know, this working group's relationship or the scope, the difference with, you know, the other working groups in Kubernetes so that people, you know, um, people is aware of this and are clear. Uh, also, I think we should also avoid any duplicate work. Uh, yeah, we talked about that, Arnold. I, th I think before, before yeah. you joined. So we, we, yeah. We're going to actually change the or add some text or to this uh, charter once those working groups actually get to find this. The serving working group and the and the other, what, what's the other working group? The accelerated yeah. management. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Great. Ricardo, I, I, I didn't join the, uh, the first part. Have we discussed what we are going to do? I mean, the down the, the roadmap for this working group? Is there like- Yeah, yeah we did that actually. We discussed quite a few items before you- Oh, joined. great, okay. Okay, so we don't have time, but I think maybe who added this elected working group leader to co-chair KubeCon? Is that the... Yeah, I, I did this one. Uh, so I think the we recently got the emails from CNCF to uh, to nominate co-chairs for KubeCon. Uh, since given that the the scope of the KubeCon uh, goes a lot efforts into AI, I think it makes sense to elect any of the leaders in the working group to co-chair the next KubeCon. I think in Salt Lake City in November. Um, this will make a lot of visibility and also uh, domain experts available to the KubeCon programs. Yeah, yeah. yeah so uh, I think this is just uh, for people on the call, I guess. When they, you get that email, feel free to nominate someone in the community. I mean, it's who you think it might be a good candidate. Right? Uh, I think we we keep adding things <laughs> to to the scope of it, as somebody that, added. That, that was me. I put it in the notes versus the agenda. Yeah. Accident. But we're out of time, so I want to be mindful of folks that have know, you, yeah, other please. things going on. Um, but uh, we we do have a meeting again scheduled for next week, so we'll meet again. But I think we can. Did you want to briefly say anything about this? Or, uh... I'll, I'll put it in Slack. I just wanted to say uh, there was another CNAI presentation last night that I, I gave at the AI user group. And uh, there was a couple other meetings just, just so people know that we are talking about this in the wild, sharing the paper and, and all those good things. Oh, great. Which AI user group are you talking to? Have you it's, talked to it's literally called the AI user group <laughs> uh, oh. in, in San Francisco. Uh, so that was last night. Um, here's the link uh, for it. As soon as I get back to Zoom. Zoom. Again, I'll put it in the Slack. Anyway, 30, 30 minutes in is where I start. Perfect. All right. Oh. Um, Thank you. So is the next meeting next week? Yeah, we have a meeting next week. So uh, okay. Uh, yeah, please work on on some of these things. Uh, feel free to chat on Slack. Uh, there's a lot of work to do. Obviously, I don't know if we're gonna get uh, to do a lot of it. Uh, or I mean, everybody's busy, but you know, let's keep making progress. Right on. All right. Great effort, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Ricardo. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Great work. Thank you. Bye. Bye.